What's up guys and welcome back to Emacs USA and today I'm going to show you how to install your Spectrum receiver on a Tiny Hawk model. Now the Spectrum receiver I like to use is the SPM 4648 and the reason being this has an auto bind feature so you don't have to mess around with pressing a button or anything like that. It lights up after 10 seconds of plugging it in and you can bind it right to your transmitter. Now when installing this I do like to decase the receiver that way it's as small as possible because on some of our Tiny Hawk models like the Tiny Hawk 2 or maybe the original Tiny Hawk it's gonna be hard to figure out a place where to put this and you may have to even install it on the outside of the aircraft if you really want to use spectrum but for this video I'm actually just gonna use a naked board right here an all-in-one outside of an aircraft so you can easily see where you want to solder your receiver to and where the pads are you're gonna to need to solder this directly to the board and able to use it so make sure you have a soldering iron some tools right Ready, and a spectrum receiver and let's get started. Now we're going to focus on the board here and I'm going to show you the location of the pads and this is how it's going to be sitting in your aircraft upright and you're going to want to flip it over and actually go to the bottom of the board and that's where you're going to solder your receiver to and if you look right here next to the bind button you're going to see an RX1, a 3.3 volt and a negative pad and the 3.3 and the negative pad are right where this capacitor is and you're going to want to leave this capacitor on and you're going to solder directly to the negative and positive side side of the capacitor and just solder right to it and then your signal wire is going to be to this RX1. Now that we went over the pads and where to solder to you're going to want to take the cable that comes inside the receiver kit and we're going to cut one of these connectors off because we're going to be directly soldering to the board and you want to keep in mind how long you want to make this cable depending on where you're routing your receiver to. So on the Tiny Hawk 2 you're probably going to run it out to the back here or up here so if if you go you can just guesstimate how long you want to make it and I'm just going to keep it probably that long uh, just so I know for sure that it's going to reach the receiver into the back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here and tin the wire that way I can solder it to the board. Now once I have that cut off, I'm going to go ahead and strip these wires right here. That way I can tin them and they're ready to go onto the board. And I usually just use the side snips to strip them. I just go really careful, don't put a lot of pressure, slight pressure, and give it a good yank. And you'll be able to strip the wires like this. Now I can go ahead and tin these wires, that way they're ready to solder onto the board. Now when tinning the wires, you're going to want to apply a little bit of solder to the tip of your iron. And when you go ahead and tin these wires, make sure you don't hold it there too long as these wires tend to melt. So I'm just going to go in and tin them really quick. And if it's melting too much, don't worry about it. You can go back in and trim it with some side snips. But make sure you tin all three wires. And as you can see there, I have my wires all nice and tinned. And now we can actually go ahead and tin the board. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my wires and solder it to the pads. And red or your orange wire here is going to be your power. The black's going to be negative and the gray's going to be signal. So I'm going to go ahead and solder the signal wire first. And then negative's going to go in the middle and power is going to go on the right. And there you go, you have power on the right, ground in the middle, and signal on the RX1 pad. And it's going to look something like this after you're done with the little pigtail sticking off. And like I said, I left this a little longer. That way, if you're mounting this on the back of your aircraft, it will be able to reach. All right, now after I soldered the receiver to the board, I went ahead and put it on my Tiny Hawk 2. And like I said before, you're gonna have to find a location to double side sticky to this frame. Unfortunately, this frame is not big enough to fit it inside. And after you're done doing that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and bind your transmitter to your receiver. So I'm gonna do that now and bind it up. And then we're gonna hop over into Betaflight and make sure that our port one is turned on. All right, I have my transmitter bound to my receiver. And now I'm going to plug the drone into Betaflight and turn on port number one. Once you connect to Betaflight, you're gonna go right over to the ports tab, 
and then you could see where it says UART1 and that matches to our RX1 that we just soldered to. So you're going to go over to Serial RX and turn that on and you're going to hit save and reboot. Then you're going to connect one more time and go into our configuration tab and when you scroll down you'll see under receiver Right now it says SPI RX. We're gonna to wanna to change that to serial based receiver. And then you're gonna to wanna to change Spectrum 1024 to actually Spectrum 2048. And then you could hit save and reboot. Now to make sure that everything is working correctly, we're gonna connect one last time and you're actually gonna to go to your receiver tab. And now you should be able to have full control of that receiver. If you move your sticks, you'll be able to see that roll is functioning, pitch is functioning, yaw, throttle, make sure everything's working. And if it's not working correctly, hop over to the channel map and make sure that it's on TAER1234. That's pretty much it guys on how to install a Spectrum receiver on a Tiny Hawk model. Hopefully this video helped you out a lot. And if you guys could hit that subscribe notification bell, that way you guys stay up to dates on videos like this. And if you have any suggestions, make sure to put them in the comments below. I read those all the time and I'll make sure to try to get to your video as soon as I can. So until the next one guys, I'll see you later.